in this episode, nobody told me it would be like this. I was just about to have a massive photo tantrum. <laughs> I just need it just there. That would make a... Oh, I could actually just do that in Photoshop right now. Man, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. The next spot that I go to will definitely exceed my expectations. I'm sure it will. Oh, there you go. Straight across my scene. Nice. Yeah, thanks, mate. Enjoy Hawaii, won't you? <laughs> I won't be going there for a while, will I? Eh? No. <laughs> the water curves over the rocks. Then in my mind, there's the picture. There's the picture that I hope I'm going to get. It's always there. It's always reliable and it always works. It's never over till you get home and you put your head on the pillow. But look at that gorgeous reflection that you can see there. Really fantastic. I'm, I'm overjoyed. Yeah, that's pretty grim. So before we get into today's spectacular landscape photography vlog, I just thought I'd give you a quick update on the books. So the books arrived on April the 1st and both Amanda and I have been frantically packaging them up, signing all the pre-orders and getting them out. And the estimated time of arrival is between a few days and a few weeks. What are you doing? Eating pop rocks. Eating what? Pop rocks. I'm trying to record this update. You can't be having noise. Sorry. You're basically in explosives. It, it can't be good for you. Anyway, I'm delighted to announce the winner of the giveaway of a free copy of Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle and this absolute piece, this absolutely unique, one of a kind prototype. And the winner is, drum roll, John Drummond. Sorry about that, John. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to do with that. It might be worth something one day. Yeah. So we'll get this pile of uh, wonderful uh, artifacts of history out to you in the post as soon as possible. Now, if you want a chance to win your own signed copy of Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle, all you've got to do is sign up to the mailing list and you'll automatically be entered into the next prize draw. And if you've already signed up, you don't need to sign up again, you'll automatically be entered again. You're doing it again, aren't you? Sorry. This is what I have to deal with. You think it's all fun and games, don't you? But no, it's, this is what it is. Anyway, a couple of months ago, I filmed this vlog, five things that no one ever tells you about being a landscape photographer. You're gonna love this. When I first began my journey as a landscape photographer, nobody told me that I would be forever sleep deprived and nobody told me that I would spend a great deal of my time cold and wet. Nobody told me that I would be constantly uncomfortable and often quite miserable. And most certainly, nobody told me that I would be perpetually injured from constantly falling down. But I wouldn't change a thing. I've said this before, but it's worth repeating. And that is that nothing wonderful ever comes easy. And sometimes you just have to accept that it's one of those days. Well, this is one of those bloody days. So I'm back at the very same spot that I was at just a few days ago when the conditions were completely different. There was loads of snow and a lot less ice. But today I've come back and although this reflecting pond has kind of disappeared a little bit. Look at these beautiful ice formations. And that's obviously because it's been quite a bit colder since the last time I was here. 
Oh, oh. But it's so sketchy on these rocks because the rocks are already slippery. Cover them with ice and it is just a hazard. But as you can see the peak in the background, it's got that lovely half moon just off to the right. And my plan, my hope, is that as the sun pops up in the east, that cone, the top of that peak, will get some lovely glow and it'll start to ignite. But I can just see that the clouds behind it are just turning ever so slightly pink. So what I think I'm going to try for is a nice reflection shot of that cone reflected in this little pond. Ideally with a bit of ice in the foreground. I don't know if the ice will allow enough of a reflection, but I'll try it. I'll probably have to go vertical, but uh, I don't think I have much time, so I better get across there and get my shot set up. Quite excited actually. And so began the joyous ritual of composition hunting, which didn't really work out, so I had to look elsewhere. But look at that mist that you can see off in the distance. Now, I think there is a waterfall right over there, so I'm guessing that that mist that's rising up is the spray that comes out of the waterfall and that temperature change as well as the water goes into the creek. So I'm probably gonna check that on my way out after I've finished shooting here, but uh, I reckon I've got 15 minutes before this peak catches any light. And then I don't think I'll have long to get the shot, so I better stop waffling and try and find this comp. Now you might think that after such a spectacular and recent snowfall right here on Vancouver Island, that it would be very easy to find a killer composition. Well, not really. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm struggling. Um, the shot that I framed up is really quite boring. My expectation was that I would come here and there would just be all these magnificent clouds and there would be mist and fog and beautiful light on that peak. That was my expectation, but the reality is this, let me show you. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful, but that is not a shot. And I'm looking behind me, but look at that lovely pink glow on that ridge. And that's more interesting than what I've framed up here. So I think what I might do while I'm waiting for anything interesting to happen in this fairly lame composition that does not meet my expectations whatsoever, I think I'll just put on the telephoto, zoom in on a nice little vignette up there and see if I can find some distant little section of drama in those distant mountains. It's quite, uh, quite beautiful. So as you can see, I've basically made this light on this lovely ridge my main feature but to be quite honest you know as beautiful as it is it's just not a shot there's no drama there's no contrast there's there's no story really it's it's beautiful but it just fails to excite man i, I don't know what i'm gonna do to be honest I, i'm gonna have to completely rethink my day and sort of forget everything that i was hoping to get and just try and make the best of this day out i've, I've taken a day away from editing and uh, admin all that kind of boring stuff and i was hoping to get a, an epic shot but i've got all day it's not even eight o'clock yet so there's a chance i'm optimistic not really so basically i got here tried to frame that up looked behind me discarded it and framed that up worked that that didn't work Looked behind me and then i saw this moon just about to well it looks like it's going to kind of drop down over the horizon with those beautiful snow covered trees on that ridge so that actually might be my shot. I'll just show you this composition that I've framed up. So as you can see, there's the half moon just slightly off center. And when I took the shot just a couple of minutes ago, the moon was slap bang in the center of the frame. You know, we're, we're moving pretty quickly on this spinning blue marble. So that has given me an idea. I think what I would like, it seems like it, it's basically setting. So it's going down like that. So I think what I would like is if this moon was just a little bit closer to this ridge line and it was kind of setting over the trees so that's what i might do now i think i would love it to fill the frame a bit more so i can either crop in post or i can hit my c1 button and that punches me into crop mode and gets me even closer i just basically lose almost half of my resolution but i've still got quite a lot of resolution left so that might be my shot so that might actually work so i'll stick around in this spot knowing that i've got that idea in my back pocket and you never know i might get lucky and that ridge might catch a bit of that pink glow that you can see over there now if that got that lovely pink glow 
and the, the moon caught the same kind of light and set over that ridge. That'll be a shot, I'll take that. I'll be quite happy with that. Come on. Well, it's 8 a.m. I've had three hours of sleep and I do have a face like a betrayed marmot. But I'm fairly happy because I've got a day out. You know, most of the time I spend in the office editing videos for you guys, but you know, every now and then I've got to go and shoot some shots so you've got something to watch. This has been my, I think my fourth shoot recently, maybe my fifth, where my expectations did not meet my reality. The, the disappointment factor is somewhat high. So I'm trying to keep positive and just, you know, remind myself that I'm lucky to be able to travel a little bit and get out in the wilderness. And these conditions are quite gorgeous, but man, I just, I just really had this vision of misty clouds, pink light and just epicness, but I don't think it's going to happen. After this, I'm going to head over to that waterfall that's creating all that mist and see if there's a shot there. And then after that, I'm going to head up to Upana Caves which I've shot before with Uncle Grumpy. That's where I fell on my ass and actually hurt my hand more than I hurt my, my bum. But I'm gonna go back up there because I'm hoping that one of the caves in there that has these stalagmites of ice that come down and then stalactites that come up from the bottom. I can't remember, mites, tights, whichever way it is. But there's these ice icicles that form from the top to the bottom of the cave. Might not be there, but I'm hoping that they are because there's been lots of freezing temperatures and then a thaw and then a freeze and then a thaw and then a freeze. And that's what creates these ice formations. So I'm, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that at least out of today, that might work. I don't think this shot's gonna happen. That peak is just not catching any light. I might have just got my research wrong. Now I did check on Google Earth to see if it caught that morning light and it does apparently, but I'm not seeing that so. Maybe there's a cloud or a mountain blocking it. I don't know. The only thing that's gonna cheer me up, I think, is uh, the king-size Mars bar. <laughs> this video is not sponsored by Mars, but you know, I'm open to, open to ideas. <laughs> I prefer a twirl, but get in touch. And it's about one hour after sunrise, so it's amazing that it takes so long for that peak to get that lovely morning glow. And it is quite contrasty. I don't know if this can even pick it up, but I framed up a fairly okay shot. Again, it's, this doesn't quite match my expectations, but I'll show you the shot anyway. So that's it. Just a bit of light on the top of that peak. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad, I know. I know it's pretty bad. Yeah, three hours of sleep and uh, a six hour round trip drive just, just for that little bit of a little bit of light on that peak there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sure that the next spot that I go to will definitely exceed my expectations. I'm sure it will. I I'm pretty sure. You can see that mist over there. That's where I'm headed next. So I'll have a, I think I'll have a little coffee just to perk me up, you know, because I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit upset. Not going to lie. Actually, that light is now quite striking. It's, it's quite beautiful, actually. And I love that everything in this image is completely covered in snow. We've actually got, I don't know if they're really gonna show up on the shot, but just behind that peak, there's these little puffy clouds, which I don't think they're gonna really catch the light, but it, it's a little bit better than having no texture whatsoever. So look at that detail now in those trees, just a lovely bit of relief. And as that light, creeps over that ridge actually i'm going to shoot this and stop gabbing but as it as it hits this line of trees here you can see it's just starting to go across the top there it might actually make a more interesting shot so oh look look at that little bit of light there gorgeous i just need that moon that you might be able to see over there i just need it just there just right right there if only that moon was just before that peak there, catching that light. That would make a... Oh, I could actually just do that in Photoshop right now. All right, so here's the shot. And here's the moon. Oh, now we're talking, yeah. <laughs> but if you're gonna Photoshop the moon in, you might as well do a proper job and go big. Oh yeah, that's better. Oh, but maybe I should just go full cheesy sci-fi movie. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. Oh yeah, oh that is the one. I mean, it's it's physically impossible, but nobody will notice. Yeah, it's perfect for Instagram. Thank God for Photoshop, eh? <laughs> now that I've framed up this quite pleasing shot, I've just noticed 
that there's a plane just about to fly directly into my composition in that lovely empty bit of space in the sky there. <laughs> it's all right though, isn't it? Oh, there you go, straight across my scene. Nice. Yeah. So now that that plane has completely my shot, <laughs> Yeah, thanks mate. Enjoy Hawaii, won't you? <laughs> I won't be going there for a while, will I? Eh? No. I thought I'll just show you how I shoot these types of shots, even though I'm not particularly excited about that one, but let me just take you through the process. So, what I do is, I frame up my composition, I dial in my aperture, so I've chosen f16 because I just love this aperture on this Sony 100 to 400 because f16 is very, very sharp and it gives you a lot of depth of field. And it's not too slow, you know, it's, it's fairly fast because this goes down to f32 on this lens. So, with my aperture dialed in, I switch on my autofocus and I use back button focus to hit that autofocus and trigger it, focus on the trees and then I make sure to switch it off back to manual focus and by doing that basically my focus will not change. I also make sure that I've switched off my steady shot, my optical vibration reduction because once you're on a tripod you really don't want that on, especially when you're shooting with fairly slow shutter speeds. So now I have my 10 second timer on because with the vibration of me hitting this shutter, there's quite a lot of shake in the whole apparatus with the lens, the camera, and the tripod. So with my 10 second timer on, I just hit that shutter fairly gently, take my hands off and just wait for it to take the shot. A lot of people say to me, Gavin, why don't you just have a remote shutter release? Then you don't have to use that 10 second timer. And yeah, it's a, it's a good thing to have, and I actually do have a wireless one, but I never use it. And, and the reason why I don't use it is because my camera bag is usually all the way over there, and I don't have to keep coming back and going, going back to my camera bag just to get one more extra piece of gear. And I'm a minimalist. I don't like extraneous gear. It's not necessary when I have an inbuilt two second, five second, or 10 second timer. Then the other reason as well is, Having that remote shutter release is it's just one more piece of gear to either forget, oh, I forgot my timer, or to just fail on you, just go wrong, and then you've, you know, you've got to use your 10 second timer anyway. The 10 second timer, or two or five second timer, it's always there, it's always reliable, and it always works, and I can't lose it, or stand on it, or drop it in a river, which I guarantee you, I've probably done a few times. That's my excuse anyway, but if anyone wants to send me a really posh, wireless remote shutter then you know I'll, I'll take that but better still if you want to pay me to put it in this video then I'll, I'll take that yeah. right well I think I've pretty much rinsed this location the light is as good as it's ever gonna get I think it's time to move on so I'm gonna pack my gear up wade through three more rivers <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then go back to the car and eat some pasta have some coffee maybe have a plop and then go and have a look at that waterfall see if it's any good the mist is still coming out of it, so it's consistently misty, so I'm quite quite excited about that. We'll see. I'm sure it I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll meet my expectations, yeah. Alright, let's pack up. Right, so I guess I'll go back through this uh, freezing cold river. It's only minus five, it's not too bad. <laughs> this is the one where I fell. It didn't hurt. Well, it did hurt, actually, really, quite badly. But that didn't stop me from trudging an extra kilometer to that intriguing waterfall that I could see off in the distance. So I got as close as I could for a sneaky peek, and while it was quite lovely, it didn't really excite me. And to be honest, I had other things on my mind, which brings us to the next thing that nobody ever told me about becoming a landscape photographer. And that is just how wonderful it is to peel off your hikers and slip on some appropriate footwear. Ugh. Oh, it's so nice to get out of my boots and into my flip-flops. Oh, what's that? Well, it's a rock. I picked up this rock for Amanda. She she collects rocks, so she'll probably think it's crap, but you know, it's a thought that counts, isn't it? Right, so I've got this pasta that I made last night. Because I don't basically don't eat salt anymore, it means I can't eat road food, junk food, or takeout or anything like that. Even really restaurant food, so I prepare my own meals and what I prepared last night was a tuna pasta which is laced with fresh parsley, fresh basil, a ton of garlic, some cherry tomatoes which I uh, ground up in a blender, some capers and uh, some bocconcini cheese. Absolutely, absolutely magnifique. And then I drowned it in olive oil. But don't worry I'm not gonna 
I'm not gonna make you watch me eat this whole thing. I'll speed it up and do a time lapse. <laughs> I'll just stop for a minute just to catch my breath. So that that wasn't a total failure. I mean I got I got an okay shot. It wasn't killer, but it was okay filler. And this is the thing with expectations. I, I I'm preaching to the choir, I know, but I should know better. I do this professionally. I do it all of the time. So you would think that with that experience, I would be a little bit more realistic with my expectations. But I don't know what it is. I just, I get in the car, I drive miles and miles, hours and hours, and in my mind, there's the picture. There's the picture that I hope I'm gonna get, this vision, you know. And I know that the chances of it turning into a reality are pretty slim. But yeah, I still go, and yeah, I still have that that faith, that hope, that optimism. And I'm quite a, a pessimistic person. I really am. I'm a completely impatient person as well. But when it comes to photography, I have all the patience in the world. I have all the optimism in the world. I always believe it's going to happen, and uh, it doesn't always happen. In fact, it doesn't happen even 20% of the time. I would say 10%. One in 10. That's when you get results. And this is my uh, second time out here in a week, so, you know, I've got at least another seven to go before I have a chance of actually getting it, but you've got to try, haven't you? So this next spot that I'm going to, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and adjust my expectations. I know what I have in mind, but just like I did there, you've got to be prepared to just kind of flip it and see what the light gives you and then adjust and sort of ditch your expectations, adapt and get something totally different to what you thought you were going to get. Fingers crossed. Oh, that was magnifique. <laughs> Barely touched the sides of that, I tell you. Starving. I've been up since three though, so I'm fully hank. Oh, let's enjoy a nice kicking horse coffee. I'm still waiting for that sponsorship deal. Kicking horse, if you're watching. Well, just get in touch and uh, give me some money. Mm. Oh, Pacific Pipeline. It really is the best. Get in touch. I mean, just a free bag would do, you know. Year's supply or something. Yeah, whatever, you, you get in touch. Right, well, I think I'll just make use of the uh, delightful facilities over there. And then uh, I'll be on my way to the cave. After that delicious pasta and the world's best coffee, I was fully recharged and ready for the next snow-filled adventure. Now I realise this is quite out of character, but I'm going to have to lose my appropriate footwear, put some socks on and some inappropriate winter boots, just because it could be a bit slippery and uh, dangerous in there. And then I'm going to put my cleats on, my boots, so that I don't slip and fall. So. You know, every now and then you've got to be a bit inappropriate. <clears throat> oh, I'm so far, I can't, I can't bend over. Ah, it's been such a long time since I put these uh, cleats on. I'm not sure if I... Front. Okay. I'm not sure if I can remember how to do it. Oh, and if you're thinking uh, this vehicle looks suspiciously like Clarence's, uh, well, I, it's, I borrowed it. Yeah, that was part of the deal. Yeah, that I I get to borrow it every now and then. Oh, there you go. Try it to the. There's nothing like having the proper tools for the job, you know. Those are Bobby Dazzlers, those. Absolute Bobby Dazzlers. Right. right, time for some fun in the snow. This is a workout, isn't this? The snow's actually three feet deep in places and it's turning into a bit of a bit of a grueling workout. So I think it's time to peel off some layers. I don't really need all of this stuff. I'm sweating like crazy. But I guess the real question is, how did I film this clip without getting any footprints on the trail? So this cave is probably the most popular one out of all of these caves here at Upana. This spot right here is where Adam and I went down in that cave and I fell on my ass and sprained my hand. So if you haven't seen that video, here's that video. And 
I actually got a quite a decent shot, maybe even a good shot from that shoot. It was one of those make your own kind of light things at night where I set off a, a smoke bomb and then backlit it with a whole bunch of LED lights to create these light rays to blast around this rock. And I'm actually quite happy with the image. So here's the image that I shot two years ago. I don't think I'll bother going in there today. This isn't the cave that I'm after, but I do like all of these uh, icicles that are hanging down. So I'll get a couple of shots of those and then I'll move to the cave that I've actually come here to shoot. Any bears? Any cougars? Probably not a good idea to uh, enter a cave during the winter. Maybe there's a bear or a cougar living in there, you know, Airbnb, nature style. But uh, I've got a headlamp, so got my bear spray. It should, should be all right, you know? Yeah. Those amazing icicles that were there two years ago, when uh, Grumpacious and I came, they're gone. So I guess that was a total waste of time. But I guess what I'll do now then is just head down to the bottom cave, which is the biggest cave, and just see if there's something interesting going on down there. Didn't want to go in there anyway. Judging from the pristine snow, I was definitely the only person stupid enough to venture in here today. But I'm sure it'll all be worth the effort. As soon as I enter the cave, there'll be a... Oh, it just looks the same as it always does. <laughs> oh, great. I think I've lost count of the amount of times I've visited this cave. I've come here in all seasons. Summer, winter, winter mostly. And again... <laughs> It's that expectation. I come here in winter because my expectation is that there'll be these gigantic ice chandeliers dripping down from the ceiling and it'll be absolutely epic. Or maybe there'll be like huge waterfalls pouring off of these cliffs. It's never happened. I've never seen it, but I still come here with that hope and that expectation. So expectations dashed once again. But I tell you what, I still feel quite lucky that I'm able to get out and visit these places still because there's some people in the UK and throughout the rest of the world that have these really strict lockdowns and curfews and I really do empathize with you guys it's that's hard and it's probably going to make its way here to Vancouver Island and I'll you know I'll be looking back on these days of sort of relative freedom or what currently passes for freedom thinking oh you should have made more of it but I, I think I've, I've made as much as I can out of today so i think what i'll do now is just quit i'll head back i'll hike through that uh, massive snow drift get back to the car drive all the way back and then i think I'll, i should be passing where i was this morning around about three four o'clock in the afternoon and i might get some nice afternoon sunset type of light so i might get a second shot well it'd actually be a third shot a third attempt at some lovely sunset light in that area. I, I hope I get something. It's never over till you get home and you put your head on the pillow. There's always a chance. And so I began my journey back to where this adventure began. And by the time I returned, things had changed drastically in just a few hours. This was beginning to look a lot more like my expectations. Yeah, this will do nicely. Look at that, I've got a gorgeous reflexion right there in this little pool. And the added bonus is, if that doesn't light up, which I don't think it will, I can turn around and shoot these mountains in the same reflecting pool. Nice. Oh yeah, this looks pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's gonna work great. So my secondary plan is, if, if this wide angle reflexion shot doesn't work out, I'm going to use a telephoto and zoom right in on the peak. That one that I just showed you, or perhaps that one there. I think that should work, especially if I get some light. I tell you what, I've got a full-blown wrist. It looks cold, 
but it's actually quite warm. I'd say it's three degrees Celsius. Oh, I've got a full wrist on. Ooh, bit of light there. Ooh. The light definitely has improved already. So what I've framed up is this vertical shot. And obviously you can see that's a very obvious foreground. If I leave that in, I'll definitely have to focus stack. But what I've done with the composition is just put the mountain, whoa, put the mountain slap bang in the center and make it all about that mountain. But I don't know, it's, it's all right. It doesn't excite me that much. I reckon if the, if the light does something, it'll completely change the composition. But I'll take this shot. It's, a, it's an easy, it's a gimme. And then I'll show you this next shot because I've seen something a bit further up river where the, the water is pouring over these rocks. And so you've got motion, a little bit of white water, but you've also still got that reflexion as the water curves over the rocks. So I'll take this shot and I'll show you what I mean. God. Now because the sun was behind the mountain, I didn't get any lovely light on the peak, but I was very much encouraged by those misty clouds. Maybe I would get a good shot after all. Okay, so with this shot, you can see what I'm trying to go for here. It's the way that this water wraps around these, these river rocks. I mean, I like that there's a little bit of white water, so I've got some texture and some motion, but what I'm really after is the way that the water curves over the rocks and it makes this lovely glossy shape, which reflects that gorgeous light that we've got going on over there. So I've put the mountain just ever so slightly off to the right, and I kind of like this knobbly tree that you can see over there. I think it's just a dead tree, but it looks kind of cool, especially with the mist behind it. So it's a pretty obvious, simple composition, but I really do love this foreground. So I'll take this shot and then I'll go vertical, get a little bit closer and see if that works a little bit better. I'll lose some of these gnarly trees, but it might just increase the pointiness of the mountain there and make it a little bit more imposing. After that dip in the river, my temperature's dropped. It's time to uh, put some more layers on. But just look at that misty backdrop. Absolutely magnifique. I mean, I've never, I've never seen this spot before. So for me, this is an absolute bonus. I didn't expect to get anything, to be quite honest. And that was an okay shot. Definitely wasn't a killer, but it'll do for filler. Absolutely fantastic. I'm just trying to see a shot. I'm, I'm looking all around me. I'm trying to find a telephoto shot and it's just not jumping out. I need a little splash of light just to hit one of these peaks and that'll be it. Just zoom right in and fill the frame with a small little vignette, but I don't think it's going to happen. I might just have a look over there and just see if there's any comps that I can find with that lovely mist in the background. I mean, that is, that is just gorgeous and blue hour could be absolutely spectacular. So yeah, I didn't get anything fantastic, but I'm rather happy with what I got and I'm glad I came. All right, let's have a look over there then. Well, just as I was about to go down there and have a look at what I could see with that mist, I did the classic turn around. Bosh, I saw that. Look at all that color, that reflection. And this group of trees kind of looks like an island, which I've got reflected beautifully in this flat cam pond. And then look at these misty mountains, just creating a beautiful backdrop, just really fantastic I'm, I'm overjoyed as i said i didn't expect to get anything this was more of a, a recognition than anything else don't you just love it when you have low expectations and then something good happens and then it's just everything's a bonus well, let me just show you this shot so as you can see it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of spirit island in jasper national park it's actually calming down a bit now it was quite epic five minutes ago but look at that gorgeous reflection that you can see there just so atmospheric so what i did for this shot is i focused on the tree line there 
and then I did my darker and then my brighter exposures and then I changed my focus point to this rock in the foreground and did a, a slightly underexposed frame for that one. F10 should give me plenty of sharpness and depth of field and that's it a pretty simple shot a beautiful island some beautiful light a nice reflection and mist everywhere what more do you want? Things were definitely improving, but I had a feeling that they were going to get even better. Now, if you were paying attention, you will have noticed that my camera bag and my bright red jacket are right in the middle of my shot. And, you know, if I wasn't so lazy and out of shape, I'd, I'd walk the extra 30 feet and just pick them up and move them. But through the magic of Photoshop, I can just take those out and save those precious 16 breaths that it would have taken to go over there and do it. That's really bad, isn't it? I've lost all my gains, all of them. So I was just in the process of packing up. I was gonna do my goodbye clip and this peak started to light up. I, I don't know if you can see it through the Osmo. It's just this little sliver of pink amongst those blue hues behind it. Absolutely gorgeous. And it, in the time it took me to put this lens on and try and use autofocus, it had gone. And I was having, I was just about to have a massive photo tantrum and then it came back and it's, it's teasing me now. It's kind of coming and going, coming and going. So I've just, I've just focused and I'm just shooting like a, like a nutcase. Just make sure that the focus is good still. I think it is. I've got back button focus, I'm focusing on the tree line. Once I've focused, I then switch back to manual focus because I don't want it to keep trying to refocus with the mist coming in and out. Mist is quite treacherous when it comes to autofocus because your, your camera's like, well, what, what, what am I trying to focus on? It kind of gets confused. So once you feel like you've got good focus, then switch it onto manual focus and lock it down and it won't keep trying to focus. I'll make sure I've got a uh, vibration reduction off Oh, it's just so beautiful. So I'm gonna to have to just put this down and focus on this shot. I have to get this shot. And finally, nobody told me how good it feels when this happens. I just love this image, and it's not just because of its visual appeal, but because it's a reminder that even when things look fairly bleak and hopeless, there's always that chance that things might just turn around. I just love this kind of light. I'm so excited I got the shakes, and I just love how that's pink but then all the peaks around it are dark blue and gray and misty. Oh, you can just see it in the, in the, the frame there, that little pink hue. Oh man, this is just, oh, just magic. Absolutely brilliant. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And I was absolutely delighted with how this day had ended. But in order to make it an absolutely perfect day, I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button and be sure to tickle my bell for maximum satisfaction. I thank you. And just like that, it's all over. Didn't last long. I think I might have got a good shot. I didn't really have much time to get my composition. I was too busy faffing around getting the lens on, but I was quite happy with that. And then as soon as it's over, my adrenaline just flushes and all I can think about is food. I'm absolutely Hank Marvin. So I'm gonna head back to the vehicle, scoff some uh, tofu stir fry. Yeah, that's pretty grim. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye bye. This is weird. <laughs>
I bet that's what kids do. That's what I still do. I bet they lick the bag. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs>